Listen up, America. It's the Adam Harmon Show. Ooh, welcome back. Welcome back to the Adam Harmon Show on Talk Radio, 790 AM, KABC. We are LA's new home for natural medicine and conscious living. Today, we are going to be talking about a new and highly researched form of natural medicine. Okay? It's been embraced by some of the leading medical institutions, including Harvard and the world-famous Cleveland Clinic, because it's so darn effective and it's science-based as well. It's called functional medicine. That's functional medicine. If you haven't heard about it yet, then keep your ears open because it's the next big thing in treating numerous chronic diseases and helping people maintain their vibrant health. Our guest today is an internationally recognized author, lecturer, and expert on this subject. James Maskell has spent the past decade sparking debate and encouraging a shift away from conventional medicine and towards a wellness-centered model. Functional medicine, that's what it's called. This functional medicine model, starting with doctors themselves. To that end, he created Functional Forum, the world's largest integrative medicine conference with record-setting participation online and growing physician communities around the world. He's also a founder of something called The Evolution of Medicine. It's also a best-selling book of his, but this community he created, The Evolution of Medicine, is an e-commerce platform that provides highly curated and customized resources, tools, products, and services, making it easier and more affordable for conventional doctors out there to embark on a new way of managing healthcare and really integrating this new form of functional medicine. James Lectures Internationally has been featured on TED Med, HuffPost Live, and TEDx. He also serves as a contributor to The Huffington Post, Kevin MD, The Big Doctor, and Mind Body Green. Well, James Maskell, welcome to The Adam Harmon Show. Great to be here with you, Adam. Such a pleasure. Oh, my goodness. Well, it is my pleasure. I've heard such great things about you from some of the top people in the field out there, including what's considered the father of functional medicine, Dr. Jeffrey Bland himself. Yeah, Dr. Bland is a legend. Thank you. There we go. You know, let's let's dive into this whole area as it relates to functional medicine. I think we need some definitions here. I know it's uh, it's been around for quite a while within the, the certain niches of naturopathic doctors and many other areas. It's growing out there, but it's sort of a new term to the, the whole world out there. How would you define functional medicine and how does it compare to conventional medicine models? Uh, yeah, the simplest way I like to think about it for most people is root cause resolution, right? <laughs> you go to a doctor, you have a set of symptoms. The, the plan for most physicians has been to give you a drug or something else that will make that symptom go away. But ultimately, you're not dealing with the root cause of the issue. Functional medicine is about identifying that root cause and dealing with the problem at the root cause so you get back to normal health. You don't have a dependence anymore on medication. And so I, I've just been very interested in it because it feels just a more congruent way of getting people and getting a community and getting healthcare back to a health focused state and it's it's pretty obvious to anyone who's who's looking that healthcare today is more like sick care it's not really about creating health the goal mm. is not a healthy person right the goal is someone who's on you know different medications because that's how you know that's how the whole business part of medicine works and um, you know I'm really interested in creating structures and systems that can keep get people healthy and keep people healthy and that's why I was really attracted to functional medicine it's so interesting a lot of people out there will say you know I need my soul or, 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 I, or I need my different forms of ACE inhibitors or I need many of these other things. And, and it's not due to an ACE inhibitor deficiency uh, because you have hypertension. It's, it's other issues as well. Can you delve more into that concept of the root cause? Yeah, so, you know, there are many different kinds of root causes. You know, medicine was created, the kind of medicine that we have today was created in an era when the main types of diseases were trauma, and infections, right? And it, with those types of diseases, you want the doctor to come and save you. You know, you want the antibiotics if you have an infection. Like that was medicine created for that era. Now, in the last 50 years, what we see is a totally new different types of disease where, you know, you have chronic disease that are um, built from lifestyle, from, you know, overstress, 
terrible food system, not people not sleeping enough, people get you know sucked into having three or four jobs, stress, sleep, all those kind of things. And so these kind of diseases need a different root cause resolution, right? It's not the infection of something else that's coming in and doing it to you. So you need to be able to unwind those, those issues. So I know that those drugs provide a lot of... Um, you know, what we say, like, the, you know, they, they can provide comfort for people, they can provide pain relief. But ultimately, those drugs have been tested in a short term environment, right? Whenever they've been tested in the clinical trials, the clinical trials are never longer than six weeks. Mm -hmm. So you should not be on them for a long term. And if you are on them for long term, there are side effects that are happening, whether you know it now or not, that are going to lead to more drugs and more problems. And ultimately, the biggest freedom that any of us can have is freedom from any of these things where you're just healthy. Yeah. And, and ultimately, once you catch the sight of that potential for yourself and you see that you could live, you know, a healthy life into your eighth, ninth and tenth decade, yeah. that is available to all of us today. But we just have to take responsibility because the thing is, the doctor can't do that for you. And that's really why I call this thing the, the evolution of medicine, because it's medicine adapting to its new environment. And in the old world, the doctor was the most important. In this new world, the patient is the center. It's the concept of being a patient-centered practitioner. I think that's really wonderful. I, I find many times that people out there, they want to leave with a diagnosis. They want to be put inside a box, but they get so down on themselves if they have some form of chronic disease because it does not find resolution in that format. I, I believe what you're talking about is really allowing the individual to be the center of the treatment, allowing them to take responsibility, but to treat them as an individual as opposed to an ICD-10 code or something like that. Yeah, absolutely. Everyone has a unique history that's got them to this point. And ultimately, the, one of the key things that you'll notice if you engage with functional medicine is that the doctor will take a lot more time with you to understand your unique history and look for those root causes. Sometimes those root causes can come from things that were completely out of your control, like how you were birthed and you know what your situation was like growing up. But no one has probably ever taken the time to have that kind of conversation with you. And so, you know, I've been interested in functional medicine. I, I feel like it's, it's the terminology that is going to bring the kind of medicine that you've been interested in for 30 years into the mainstream because it's got enough science to get mainstream doctors and mainstream organizations like the Cleveland Clinic interested in it. And later this year, we're going to see that it, when, when they do the outcomes research, that this type of approach gets better outcomes at lower cost. And ultimately, we're running out of money in healthcare and a lot of sick people. So we need both of those things. That's great. That's great. Can you give our listeners some insights as to, uh, well, really where the rubber meets the road on the treatment? Uh, I know that within mainstream medicine, you have a situation where an individual can receive a drug or they can get surgery or they can be irradiated. Um, uh, what are the type of therapies someone should expect in a functional medicine doctor's office? Yeah, most people when they, you know, when they start a functional medicine regimen will do some sort of lifestyle um, changes. And typically one of the biggest influences you can have is food. And, you know, one of the things that typically happens is that people have some sort of food sensitivities they're not aware of. And, you know, it's causing inflammation or other things. And so typically what they'll do is do some sort of an elimination diet where you take out a bunch of foods out of your diet and then you slowly add them in and you notice about yourself, what's happening. Because huh. ultimately the point is to empower you with the information about yourself. Everyone's different. There may be encouragement to, you know, to sleep, um, sleep more or have a different sleep hygiene, um, like where, you know, you're not using your, you know, phone first thing in the morning or last thing, things that cause stresses. I mean, ultimately, that's the focus will be the lifestyle. The kind of interventions that a functional medicine doctor will use, sometimes they'll do a deeper kind of lab testing to uncover like root cause factors and see what's going on. And then they may use, you know, some supplements depending on whether the case uh, merits it or not. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's very, very interesting. I find the differences here make all the difference in regards to the care, really empowering the patient. So I applaud you for the work you're doing and really gathering together doctors and helping them with that concept of integrating this into their practice. And please, um, what, what is your website? If, if a doctor out there says, I want to get more into this, where would they go? Yeah, if you go to go, Evo Med, G-O-E-V-O-M-E-D, that's 
goevomed.com. That's the evolution of medicine. And on there, you can set up a time with one of our team or you can look at the resources. We've made tons of free resources to make it easier for doctors to say, yeah, I want to do that. Um, that's what the whole book's about. You know, the first thing that we had to do was to get 10 times as many doctors doing this. And that's been the first part of our journey. Right, right. Hey, you know, uh, Within any new and, uh, uh, and, and up-and-coming field, there are challenges in getting it out there into the world. Um, what have been the challenges in getting functional medicine into the public? Um, and uh, and, and uh, give us some ideas as to maybe some ways we can overcome them. Yeah, so, you know, one of the things has been that, you know, functional medicine has really been – um, for so far, the sort of the very rich and the very sick, right? If you've been very desperate, you might have found one. Um, if you're very rich, you could afford one. But it's not an expensive medicine. It's just you have the illusion of expense based on the fact that insurance companies don't pay for it. And so, you know, that's one of the things that we've been looking at. But ultimately, you can get a lot of the benefit from functional medicine from actually doing this yourself. So, you know, someone like Mark Hyman, who's probably the best known person in functional medicine, he's written 12 best selling New York Times bestsellers. You take any one of those, you implement what you read, you're going to get 80% of the benefit of functional medicine. So there's a lot of resources that are making it cheaper, but ultimately insurance has been the major roadblock. We are here again with our special guest, functional medicine expert and best-selling author, James Maskell. You know, James, first of all, thanks for hanging in with us. Great being here with you, Adam. Oh, my goodness. You know, before the break, you had mentioned that getting insurance to cover natural medicine can be challenging. Uh, can you expand on that a bit? Yeah, so most people are probably very aware, you know, everyone in America has been forced to buy health insurance for the last eight years under the ACA, mm -hmm. and everyone will be pretty aware that it doesn't cover anything that I'm talking about. Oh. And um, and so there's a there's a there's an issue. You know, people are spending records amount of money. You've got the amount that you pay for insurance is going up. The deductibles are going up ridiculously, and so there are a lot of people out there who are thinking what am I paying for? And actually, there's been a lot of articles coming out recently saying that people are super frustrated with health insurance because if you're healthy and you take care of yourself proactively, you know, you're essentially way overinsured, right? If you're following the functional medicine lifestyle, you're never going to get type 2 diabetes. It's mm -hmm. like very, very unlikely that that would happen. And yet you're insured as though you might. And so, you know, we've been looking at um, for structures for a while that could replace insurance and, you know, what are different ways that could incentivize people to get healthy and stay healthy. You know, the, the person who gets the best value out of their insurance plan is the person that uses it the most, which means they're the least healthy. Mm. And so those underlying incentives are a big problem in medicine. And we've been looking for structures that could, you know, that could align everything, one, for you to want to help yourself but also for you to help your fellow man. And that is actually the most important structure. Like for, for generations, for, for eons, we've been a, a culture of, uh, of community, of, of tribal nature. And ultimately, you know, finding ways, you, you know, by nat by, you know, so naturally we want to help each other. But ultimately what we've seen is that the system that we have now does nothing to incentivize that, actually disincentivizes that. And so that's kind of um, what we've been thinking about. Well, that, that's, that's really wonderful. I know that's been a big issue. Um, uh, I've had many years um, lecturing and even working in sales in uh, one of uh, our sponsors, Metagenics, uh, uh, for the show. Um, they sponsor a great product called Estravera for hot flashes. And um, bottom line on the whole thing is, is, is that people out there are constantly uh, uh, just taking a deep breath and a pause as it relates to the cost related to natural medicine. I, I heard stories when I was uh, uh, in New York City many years ago uh, about doctors who would bring people through thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars of testing until they finally started giving them supplements and those cost too. So it was very, very hard on individuals and I'm I'm glad that you're looking into that area. You know, I, I know that you're leading a large group of functional medicine doctors who have created an exciting new healthcare co-op that allows consumers to access natural functional medicine at affordable prices. 
Can you tell us about uh, how you started the program, how people can access it, some of the features of it? Um, just he here is your moment in time to be able to get the good work you've done out there. Yeah, let me just give you a little bit of backdrop. So uh, in 2013, I had a child. And I, up until that, for eight years, I had been uninsured in America, oh. right? For um, 25 to 32, I just took my chances. I couldn't afford it. I was just building my business and I, I didn't do it. But then I, I realized I need to get it in 2013. And I started to look around and I found that there was this this sort of loophole to the ACA where there were these groups called the Christian Health Cost Sharing Ministries, right? Not many people know about it, but actually more than 500,000 Americans use it wow. as an alternative to insurance. So these are groups of people who have decided that they're going to share their health care costs and they commit to being healthy and they commit to, you know, being participating in that way because of their faith. And so I saw that, you know, I've been a member of one of those for five years. And in fact, we promoted one of them a couple of years ago. And ultimately, we see that groups of people who come up with their own understanding and their own agreements about how they share their health care costs and agree to be healthy, you know, it was, it's been dramatically cheaper. So to give you an example, I've paid four forty nine dollars a month for a family of three compared to the cheapest ACA plan today would be like $1,500. So I'm saving $1,000 a month, $12,000 a year over commercial insurance. And ultimately, I thought all the time, I was like, you know, the functional medicine community would be the best community to build one of these health cost sharing cooperatives on. But because of the law and the ACA, you couldn't build your own one. And then on January 2nd, the Trump tax bill went through and got rid of the individual mandate. And because of just the unique thing that I've been doing for the last 13 years, in my mind, I was like, well, that means we can build our own one. And on that day, I was set up. And so we are building the first health cooperative. And so what that means is it's a group of 10,000 people who have decided that they're going to opt out of insurance. And rather than having an insurance company manage the risk of them having an accident, the risk is going to be borne by the group. So as an example, if you have the worst possible issue, let's say you're hiking and you fall down a cliff and you need to be airlifted lifted to UCLA. And that right. whole thing costs a million dollars. If you have 10,000 in a group, what that means is that's a hundred bucks each for mm -hmm. everyone. Mm -hmm. So the risk is now borne by the community and the cooperative decides to share those costs. And we've got this awesome technology that's going to run the whole thing. So it's going to be super transparent. So everyone knows exactly how much is in the fund, what's going to pay for what. But the ultimate is that in order to get in, you have to be practicing the functional medicine lifestyle. And so, you know, we have a three-year window right now before the next president walks in. Maybe it's Oprah. Maybe Trump comes back for a second <laughs> term. Right. But we've got a three-year window to prove now that the right care and the right incentives can get people well and keep people well. And the generosity that we're going to deliver through this by bringing people into the group who we think we can get better. So we're basing this, this cooperative on anyone that is healthier than the average. So all the health practitioners that I work with, people like yourself who have taken, you know, you know, taking it on personally, you know, uh, health coaches, people who go to things like CrossFit and the gym regularly, you are overinsured in the current system because you are taking care of yourself and taking personal responsibility, we believe that should be rewarded. So if you go to New Health Now, new is K-N-E-W, so newhealthnow.com, we're essentially doing like a, a kind of a Kickstarter. We need 10,000 people who are healthy to say, I'm in and put down $100. And on January 1st, 2019, when the individual mandate kicks in from the Trump tax bill, we will have a new health cooperative. And thousands and thousands of people are already interested. We've got all kinds of exciting partners of people who have tons of healthy people. And ultimately, this is going to work. And we're going to, in the next three years, we're going to be able to show so that, you know, by the next election, we will have a seat at the table for whatever health care looks like in the future to say personal responsibility, you know, and incentives in the right direction are an important part of wherever the future goes. And so, you know, that's our mission for the next three years. And if you're listening to this and you have been listening to this show for a long time and you do take personal responsibility and you do want to save thousands and thousands of dollars per year over your health insurance, you now have a choice and we'd love for you to choose us. You know, that's that's literally amazing. I. I'm so glad that you've spent the time and put the due diligence into making something like this happen. Um, can you just give us an idea since uh, the functional lifestyle yeah. is, is still sort of new to individuals out there? Um, what does what is functional medicine? What types of things does functional medicine treat that our people out there are suffering from? What types of, uh, uh, of things would it re replace 
um, uh, within their everyday life and, and how would it better their life. So they understand. I mean, I, mean, I know it's only $100. Uh, to some people, it's big. To some people, it's small. But, um, uh, you know, why should people go forward on this? Well, the reason why you should join today and put your $100 in is because you want to be a founding member of this cooperative. Like, unlike an insurance company, the co- in the cooperative, it'll be the consensus of the group that decide how things are paid for, right? There's, there's no the man. This is a community that's working together to help each other and support each other. You know, ultimately, for those people who, you know, who are... Um, you know, who are well, typically there are certain things that they're doing that keep them well. They eat right, right? They don't eat a lot of processed food. Um, You know, they cook for themselves and they, you know, they they eat a lot of like vegetables, you know, these crazy things called vegetables, (laughs) right? Those crunchy things. Those those crunchy (laughs) things. So, you know, that kind of thing. You know, on the stress side, they have some sort of practice to be able to deal with their stress. So they may be meditating, they may do yoga, they may swim in the ocean, they may, you know, whatever you do that you have some sort of practice to deal with the day-to-day stresses, especially if you live in a big city, especially if you live in 2018, right? There's a lot of, it's a stressful situation. Um, you know, third, uh, I would say that they take sleep seriously. Like sleep is the one, the most underrated thing. People who sleep a lot, you know, that their health outcomes are significantly better. Seven, eight hours a night, it's it's a it's a big deal. And then the last thing is exercise. And if you're doing those four things consistently, typically you're not going to get ill. You may have a freak accident just like everyone else might, but your chances of getting a chronic disease have gone down significantly. And so we really focus on people who have already understood that. And then because we're basing our cooperative on practitioners that sort of uh, facilitate that for other people, now the initial 10,000 can serve 100,000 and then 100,000 can serve a million and a million can serve 10 million and, you know, we can create an epidemic of health. That's wonderful. Um, You know, James, I I, want to hear once again, just for our audience, um, where they go to to be able to access this. So, come on, what is it again? Yeah, so the company's called New Health. That's new with a K. So, New Health Now. K N E W Health Now. N O W. And that's basically where we're running our campaign to get the 10,000 people in. And by putting $100 down today, what you're saying is that I believe in this and I want to be a part of it. And essentially, you know, we are looking to get to 10,000 by open enrollment, which is November 1st, 2018. And I believe in this so much that on the June 26th, I'm going on a 40 city tour around the country to popularize this event. And so if you sign up with those and you pay $100 down, you're going to get two tickets to an event of your choice. And if you're in Los Angeles, June 26th is the events going down and we'd love to see you there. Well, you know something? You can consider me signed up. Boom. Ba-bam. Here we go. <laughs> and uh, everybody else out there who is listening, this man is legit. He has done great things for the field of functional medicine, respected by major universities, major corporations, and real movers, shakers, and influencers in the field of medicine. He's going to get this done. You want to be on this train. Go to, uh, once again, it's New Health Now, K N E W Health Now.com. Check it out. Dynamite. Hey, James. Thank you so much for uh, being a, a guest here on The Adam Harmon Show. Um, ladies and gentlemen, James Maskell. All right, folks, we're going to take a short break, but stay with us. Our Can You Relate segment is up next, and we're going to be sharing some exciting new ways to overcome procrastination. That's right, procrastination, and make major changes in your life. There are some key insights that you won't want to miss, so stick with us. Bringing us in smooth, we are back, and you're listening to LA's new home for natural medicine and conscious living. It's The Adam Harmon Show on Talk Radio, 790 AM, KABC. Well, during this installment of Can You Relate, we are going to be talking about an epidemic, and I say that with all capital letters, that affects nearly everyone out there to some extent, but one in five have it so bad that it can actually affect their jobs, their financial well-being, their relationships, even their overall health. You may be asking what this is. What is this epidemic? It is procrastination. You may say, oh, procrastination, that's that's not such a big thing. You just get up and do what you got to do, but... According to some researchers, chronic procrastination has more than quadrupled in the past 40 years. That's right. From an estimated 5% 
of the population in 1978 to roughly 26 percent now. A recent study of students showed that 85 to 95 percent of them procrastinated on coursework. Now, that's not high school. This is college. You got to get it done there. You're on your own. You know, and they're still procrastinating at such a high level. Another recent study showed that 95% of adults procrastinate occasionally. And out of that group, 20% of them procrastinate so much that it has jeopardized their jobs, their credit, their relationships, and even their health. Another study showed that procrastinators are more likely to eat poorly, sleep less, and drink more. Wow, that certainly sounds like an epidemic to me, don't you think? So, you know... Why do people procrastinate? Let's think about it. Why do people do that? You know, some psychologists say that certain people loved the rush of doing things at the last minute. Ooh, adrenal burst there, you know? But that in and of itself would not explain the fourfold increase in the prevalence of this in our society over the past two generations. So, hmm, let's think about that for a second. I think at its core, and I've worked with many people out there and coached many uh, uh, couples and single individuals on getting things done and really meeting their goals uh, in, in, in life coaching them and business coaching them. I think at its core, procrastination is a response to stress and ever-growing feeling of disconnection in our society. This leads to a hunger for quick fix gratifications like drinking, drugs, and thrill-seeking. I think procrastination is our body, mind, and spirit's way of saying, I need time off. But we don't give ourselves that break because we are always carrying around the feeling that things need to get done and I'm not doing them. So it's sort of like going on vacation with a cell phone that's attached to your to all of your clients. You know, it's not going to happen. All right? So in recent studies, it's been seen that one in five people are chronic procrastinators. They need this real time off, this real break so badly that it affects their health. So with all of this in mind, here are some really effective tips for overcoming procrastination that I have begged, borrowed, and stealed from some of the top people out there in psychology. First thing is, is you want to make a plan. This is really, really important. When you're standing there going, I got so much to do, I got so much to do, and you feel like a, a hamster on, a, on one of those hamster wheels, just running, 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 running but you don't have a plan. You're like, oh, I got to do this. Forgot about that. Oh, I got to do this. For... And you're just dealing with the stuff that just keeps you alive. Well, guess what? You're going to keep on doing that. You're going to keep on that hamster wheel. You got to first take a couple moments to make a plan, to write down. I remember um, in, in marketing, we used to have things called SMART goals, okay? And SMART goals basically says make a plan, but you have to have a due date for it. So what you should do is, is each and every day, when you have a moment of time in that day, schedule time to be able to handle some of these things that you're procrastinating about. Now, this is important in making a plan. A lot of people overschedule themselves, and then they fail, and then they get down on themselves even more. And that's no good, right? So what I want you to do is, is I want you to A, make a plan and schedule it. And in addition to that, I want you to be able to put Half as many things in there as you think that you should. Just half as many, all right? Make sure you get it done. You know, this scheduling is also really important, okay? It also is important because you want to schedule this time for things like meditation to get that concentrated rest that you need. Remember, the reason why you're procrastinating many times is because you're saying, I need a break, and you don't ever give yourself one. So you got to schedule you in. If you don't schedule you in, who do you think is going to schedule you in? Nobody. You're the one who is going to schedule you in. So remember, life is a, is a marathon. It's not a sprint. So schedule recharging time for yourself. Let me give you a little insight on this. When everybody always goes, oh, meditation. That's I got to go to a guru. I got to hang out on a mountaintop and, and drink wheatgrass and all this crazy stuff. No. Meditation is easy. Here's a simple one for you. All you have to do is breathe in through your nose and feel the energy of that air going into your lungs. Feel your lungs fill up. Hold it for a second. Breathe out through your mouth and feel the air leaving your lungs. That's called meditation. If you do that for five minutes, you will feel so good afterwards and so rested afterwards. You do not have to have communion with the Buddha. All you have to do is breathe in through your nose. Feel the beautiful air going to your lungs. Hold it. Breathe out through your mouth. Do that for five minutes. 
Just notice the air. That's it. If you want to get fancy, you can go, I want to breathe in all the opportunity and love in the world, and I want to exhale out all my fear, okay? But you don't even have to get fancy. So you want to schedule that time to make sure you get that rest. Otherwise, you're going to keep on procrastinating. Next thing you want to do is you want to forgive yourself for procrastinating. We beat on ourselves way too much in this society. You got to be able to say, you know something? Like I'd say to myself, Adam, you were just trying to give yourself a break. And it just didn't work out. You never gave yourself that break. So you got to forgive yourself for procrastinating. It's your body's own way. It's your mind and your spirit's own way of saying, I need a break. So you weren't doing anything wrong. So forgive yourself for it and move forward. And then there's something called the five-minute technique. And I, I stole this from a couple of people. There's actually so many people use it that I can't mention all their names. But it's a great technique. And it'll help you with procrastination like you would not believe. Here it is. All right, you ready? What I'd like you to be able to do after you forgive yourself for procrastinating, you're just trying to get a break, remember that, is I'd like you to be able to say, I'm going to jump into that thing that I've been procrastinating. I'm just going to do it for five minutes. Just five minutes. That's all I have to do it for is five minutes. You jump into it and you start doing it. Do you know that over half the time when people try this technique, they just keep on doing it? They don't stop at five minutes. It's very, very interesting. One of the biggest things that people do out there, which is interesting, is after they get done with doing something they've been pushing off, procrastinating on, you ever, you ever get this feeling you just, you just finished it up and you, you're like, that wasn't so bad. But you keep on forgetting that you said that wasn't so bad and you procrastinate again. So get yourself started. You know, son, procrastination and getting past it is all about just getting yourself started. All right? So just... Just try it for five minutes. Forgive yourself for procrastinating because you're a human being. you got to give yourself a little leeway here. But after that, say, I'm just going to do five minutes. Look at the clock. Set your timer. Everybody's got an iPhone or something out there. Set your timer. All right? And I almost guarantee you more than 50% of the time, you're going to keep on working on it. And after you're done, you're going to say the same darn thing that so many people say, which that wasn't so bad. You know, it's, it's a funny thing about procrastination. When you finally complete it, you do, you say, huh, that wasn't so bad. All right? One psychologist actually went and looked at that concept and came up with an idea of a, it wasn't so bad, should have done it sooner journal. All right, that's interesting. Um, where you take two minutes to write down your thoughts after completing a task that you've been putting off. All right? Um, and you do that every time you have a task that you put it off and you finally finish it, you write down in the journal. She asked her patients to read the journal entries every time they began to procrastinate. And you know some? It worked wonders. You, you know, in the midst of it all, most individuals, they, they yield to common sense. When it smacks them in the face, they yield to common sense. And the common sense here is, my goodness, why did I put this off? It wasn't that bad after all. You know, why didn't I fill out those forms? Why didn't I handle this? Why didn't I handle that? Why did I put that off? Bottom line is, is that you as an individual right now, can make your life go on a success fast track by getting rid of procrastination. Try the five-minute tool. Forgive yourself. Schedule time for yourself to get that time off. That's all you've been asking for when you've been procrastinating. You just haven't given it to yourself. You brought that cell phone along with your business cell phone along on a vacation. That's not smart. You're never going to rest that way. Well, you never give yourself a rest Unless, of course, you schedule it in. So make sure you meditate, breathe in, breathe out, forgive yourself, and try that five-minute technique. Boy, that works really great. And lastly, I think it's important we discuss the subconscious fear of change. I mean, a lot of people out there say, how come I can't change? How come I can't change? You know something? On a subconscious basis, it is your survival technique, your, your, your survival um, uh, instincts that keep you from change. Now, listen to me on this. When it comes to changing, you as an individual, okay, see change as the unknown, and the unknown is dangerous. So that's one of the reasons why people avoid change. Every time you feel funny about changing, I want you to try something out. You ever been at the top of a, one of those great roller coasters, and there's this anticipation about it going down, and you're like, ooh, I'm looking forward to this? I want you to bring in that feeling into your body. Remember that roller coaster when you're worried about change because you should be seeing change as an opportunity, not a threat. 
And, you know, teach your subconscious mind, your survival uh, uh, instinct, a little bit of a lesson on that one. It's time to make changes. You know, well, folks, it's it's time for a short commercial break. Stick with us. And in our last segment, the Adam Harmon Show cosmic astrologer, W. Leroy, will be up next. Stay tuned. You won't want to miss it. Oh, we are back. And you're listening to the Adam Harman Show on 790 KABC. Hey, oh, well, there's there's something going on funny in the Adam? studio here. Oh, is it that time again, it, Wayman? It is that time again. Oh, well, then it's time for... The Fabulous Dovey Leroy. Cosmic Astrologer. Oh, Dovey Leroy. We are in it. Take it away, girl. <laughs> we want some cosmic insight. Yes. So to begin, we are going to go over the weekly astrology forecast. And in Aries... Bosses, higher ups may be testy during this time, but ambition is very high. So be aware how you approach things because that will determine if things are successful or failures. <laughs> we don't want failures. No, we don't. Oh, okay. In Taurus, remain restful, fulfill neglected tasks and obligations, do not form inflexible plans, new projects, or relationships. For Geminis, try holding off on any big money decisions and projects until next week, at least until after the retrograde. Be aware of your hopes, wishes, and dreams because they can manifest during this time. For Cancers, start nothing in career and business or media zones. Give it about a week. Tread cautiously in traffic as well because tickets can be flying around during that time. And uh, just like stay inside. Yeah. Don't go outside. Stay in your shell. Be afraid. <laughs> Be very afraid. And yeah. definitely exercise caution because these career uh, situations will be happening. So career ambitions may actually clash with partners. For Leos, your workload could be piling up, which is a good thing, but do not take on any new chores during this week. Find anything old that's like debris in your life and pretty much seize it. Get it out. Just remove it. And for Virgos, go slow and realize barriers exist, hidden or not. And please make no promises. Be aware that hidden desires or life-changing action may be on your mind heavily. Lust, large finances, medical or lifestyle choices should not be acted on yet. In Libra, children and family could be a handful this week. Get chores done and prepare yourself for opportunities that will come in the following week. For Scorpios, health and work are your main focus this week and are subject to delays and mistakes. So protect ongoing projects or situations. Now for Sagittarians, please reject impulses, you fire signs out there. Hey. <laughs> and step lightly. Avoid pushing situations and people. Keep the romance at a pleasurable tone. And if there's any old uh, situations with a male or a female that you've been thinking about that you really want to enter back into your life or to contact you, do not give up hope yet. Give it a week. It probably will come back into your life. And for Capricorns, pruning may be required of old unfruitful relationships and projects. So starting this week until May, do not make any impulsive actions towards the home front. Sweet, unexpected blessings may be coming your way, and due to this, high amounts of attention may be coming your way as well. But do not be too forceful in domestic zones. For Aquarians, things may be going very well for you this week, but avoid any gossip or confessions during this time. Welcome whatever comes, but avoid initiating anything yourself. And for Pisces, be aware there could be delays or false starts with your money, earnings, possessions, anything along the lines of that, you're going to want rest and to tackle neglected chores. And that is your weekly astrology forecast. Now for Ooh. some updates. Yeah. <laughs> Just pretty much hold off until next week until after the retrograde, which is updating you going to be ending on April 15th. So we are going right. Everybody applaud. We are going to be going into direct motion with Mercury. And that means that anything that we went and reevaluated and revisited is going to be moving forward. And something interesting about Mercury retrograde is if you don't even know what you reevaluated or revisited and you don't have anything that's changed on the outer form of your you as a person, there has definitely forcefully been a shift inward that will evolve you in the way that you are supposed to go. Now, we also have a new moon in Aries. So much fire energy is happening. And this new moon is going to be on April 16th. 
This is a time to set your intentions for what you want, not for what you don't want. It's pretty much like you have a big blank piece of paper, no lines, no marks, and you get to create and manifest what it is you really truly desire and want to be and do on this earth. And there are a couple of rituals that I actually do during new moons, and you can actually look some of them up online. You can join other calling people, I guess, or groups that are a part of these new moon rituals. Do we have to become part of a witch's coven or something? Maybe. <laughs> Don't snitch. <laughs> okay, I won't give it away. We'll have to wear hats. No, I'm just Secret <laughs> society. Tin right? foil. Go ahead. <laughs> and some of these rituals that you can do is get a pen and paper, and it'll only take about 15 minutes. And what you're going to do is get yourself in this positive, lifted, higher vibrational state, happiness, whether it's drinking tea or listening to relaxing music or lighting candles, whatever it is, get yourself in that higher vibrational state. And then what you want to do is sit down and start saging around wherever it is you want to actually manifest at. And then close your eyes for three to five minutes. Take deep breaths in in through your nose and out through your mouth, just like what Adam was talking about. We're not going to call it meditating, but that's what you're doing. And what you want to do is remove all that clutter that's in your brain. You're not going to be thinking about what you're cooking for dinner that night. You need to go into what you're manifesting and actually focus on it. And then after you get grounded, you get your pen, get your paper and start writing out what it is that you want to manifest into the world. And it is amazing what you'll receive from doing that because it actually works and another way to do it is grab a crystal put it in your hand do it the same way except instead of actually um writing everything down you're just going to have the crystal in your right hand for about 15 minutes and you're going to manifest all of what it is you want in the atmosphere around you so it enters the crystal and that's it that simple boom done Bang. moving on there right? you go and speaking of crystals the crystal of the week is black obsidian ah. And the reason for that is because we are ending Mercury retrograde. And the other reason is because it's perfect for new moon rituals. And another one you can do is Labradorite or Clear Quartz, any of those. And what Black Obsidian actually is, is a very deep black stone that is shiny. And a fun fact is it comes from volcanic flow or lava. Ah. Right? Isn't that fun? Interesting. And yeah. I was wondering how it always feels warm. <laughs> What's up with that? <laughs> it's because it's lava. Lava. Yeah. But if you get, I recommend going to Mystic Journeys, going to Psychic Eye, grabbing one of those stones, holding around with you for at least the next two weeks because you can do amazing things with it. So, oh, also, Venus is showing her beauty in the, in the sky. Oh, she we, is we yet to there. see Venus? Yes. Venus is going to be showing through April and she's going to be visible uh, right after the sun sets and towards the lower west part of the sky. What will she be wearing? She's going <laughs> to pink because <laughs> Venus is the planet of love and relationships oh, okay. and her hair is going to be done. She's going to be whipping it. She's going to be like, I'm over here. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so, she's going to be visible. So definitely go and check her out and you can't miss her. She will be the brightest star or planet in that general area towards the west. Like you're the brightest star on this show. Thank you. <gasps> I knew it. <laughs> Darn it. Uh, I'm Venus. No. <laughs> but yeah, so there's some really interesting things going on. Could I ask you to pull some yes, cards? Please. Let's let's pull. I see you have some cards there. I do. Osho Zen Tarot deck. Osho Zen Tarot deck. Yes. You said that so smoothly. Uh -huh. So the Osho Zen Tarot deck. Tarot deck. Yes. Um. Uh, we just had a, a, a fabulous guest on. James Maskell is doing amazing stuff mm -hmm. in the area of functional medicine. Can you pull some cards for his 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 venture here? His yeah. Call? Do you have any specific question, or do you just want to see the journey, or do you want to just a general? Uh, maybe what do, what are we gonna see in the next uh, quarter here? Ooh. Okay. Okay. Four. Here we go. Okay. Mm, and I am pulling a card. I always pull with my left hand. Mm -hmm. I'm actually going to pull three. Something's telling me to Ooh, pull three. three and four. Well, there are three and months good. in a quarter. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Perfect. Whew. Okay, so there is a situation which I'm assuming is maybe what you were talking about previously, but you are on the waiting line right now, and you're waiting, and you're being patiently waiting, and it's almost like you're looking out the window and you're seeing something, and you're not there yet and you just want it. And I feel like also what you're doing is you're doing a lot of uh, conversations with people where you're having to almost put a face on, but not. It's like 
political, you're working with things. You're working with things around things so that you can get your way. And with the results, they could almost, because of the way that you're having to handle so much stuff, it could be a little bit like you're juggling things. But the bottom line is, is that people are going to be coming together and it's going to be starting something. So something is going to be coming together, but you are definitely working on something and it's going to be a little bit tense, but it will come to an emotional balanced energy and it will be okay. Amazing. There we go. Yeah. This is really, really good. Hey, Dubby Leroy, how does someone find you, get a natal chart, get a tarot card reading, get some of your wisdom? Where do they find you? You can contact me through dovyleroy at gmail.com. Ooh. Woo, or go to my Instagram, dovy.leroy. <laughs> <laughs> you can find me right there. Right there. <laughs> dovy.leroy. Hey, uh, you know, um, also, I, I'd love for you to draw one card for me. Perfect. For the show. Here we go. Draw okay. a card. Okay. And, and it is. is... <gasps> Guidance. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing here. <laughs> At the Adam Harmon Show. Oh, that's perfect. There we go. Yes. Help us. We'll help you. It's all good. <laughs> Listen. Hey, you know something? Once again, it's time to wrap things up here at the show. Make sure you like, subscribe, and follow the Adam Harmon Show on Instagram. We love the Instagram channel because oh, yes. there's lots of great pictures. <laughs> and Debbie Leroy helps us with that. Ooh. We're also on Facebook and YouTube. You know the show is actually shot on uh, and projected onto YouTube. So you can check us out on YouTube at the Adam Harmon Show. That's H-A-R-M-A-N Show, not H-A-R-M-O. O-N. People always get that one wrong. Well, until next time, all of us here at The Adam Armand Show would like to thank you for listening. And we hope you have a week filled with abundant health and loving relationships. <laughs> <laughs>